Okay, what we got here, this is an ad head, which is a basic mannequin form. Lots of makers make this. Um, I used to put mask on it, paint it, um, but you can sculpt clay on it. And then you've got your block of clay here. What I'm just going to do is just show you guys a generic way to do clay placement on a form for sculptor. There's a lot of videos out there that show you how to do this. And uh, it's easy enough. You take a slab of clay like this, just put it on the form, lay it on there like so. And just start putting clay on there to mold your shape of whatever it is you're doing. And this is going to be a ground up sculpting. I'm not going to tell you what the character is because I'm just going to surprise you. But I will tell you, you've already seen it once. It's already been done once. Okay. I'm going to sit there and just mold the clay together. Like so. I'm going to try to get about the same size, but it quarter inch all the way around and just put it together. And what I'm doing is just to show you cutting thin slits to get the basic form and then what you can do is you can build on top of that. You don't want to take huge slabs and chunks of clay and do this with it. You can lay them on the front, like so, like that. Just lay them right there, just, just like that. Because I want a shape on this to where if you see where the paint curvature is on this, let me see if I can drop that down a little bit. Okay, you can't see it. But you see the paint outline, right? That's usually the bottom of a form, mask, molding, whatever. Usually a mask, but this is not going to be a mask. This will end up being a resin piece. So, what I'm basically doing is I'm utilizing the natural curvatures of the form. Because it's got to split down the breastplate, it's got the curvatures of the, of the, the neck. It's got a, a, you know, the Adam's apple. Uh, that type of thing. You can use those as a natural because they're built in. It's like a taxidermy form. Some of these things are built in. Details are already built in. And what you have to do as an artist and a sculptor is take those natural forms that are built in and enhance them or utilize them to whatever character representation you're doing. So here's another slab of clay. I'll put that down the back. Put it on there and just make the neck. Back of the head. And what I'm trying to do here, I'm joining this up like this and just push it together. Uh, I said just form the basic shape of whatever it is you're doing. That's how you do it. Of course this one is probably going to be rough shape, rough outline. Okay. Doesn't look like much now. But it will when we get done. Now there are two different types of clay that you can use. There's monster clay, which is a red oil-based clay. That's usually the medium that I work in for scuffing fine details on the finished one. Because what I do is I will take a sculpting like this 
and do it, finish it, and when I get done with it, to save and preserve the work in case I need to go back to it. Um, there is a trick that you can do. Uh, it has to be done up in resin anyway. So for resin you're going to make a silicone casting of it anyway. And in doing that you make the impression of whatever it is you're sculpting. And then you can take that if you need to go back into um, making detail changes or modifications, facial expressions or whatever. And instead of re-sculpting the entire thing all over again just to change a, a facial expression or whatever or do some kind of a, you know, depending on the character, do some kind of a, a expression or detail or something like that. You really want to um, preserve those details. So what you can do is, is you take a uh, monster clay and you can melt it down in a crop pot or the heat gun or whatever. And you can actually take the uh, clay and pour it into the mold and um, reform it in the silicone mold. And that's what's called making uh, a, 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 an impression on the uh, form. And then you take that and you can just take that and rework your sculpting without having to do the entire thing all over again. I'm going to tear off some pieces here just to make sure these are forming the way I want them to. I'm trying to make them about as equal amount of clay as you can. Like I said, you can add to it. You can take away from it. Do whatever you need to. Now what I'm doing here is I'm going to mold an outline around the face of this Ed head. And I'm going to show you details on how to get different details and textures and shapes of facial features. Like if somebody has a prominent uh, eyebrow ridge, you can build on that and you can make that. Take the clay, put the blocks and stuff in different spots, and tear off a piece and put it right there. And you can do it as thin or as thick as you like, depending on what you're doing. See, for latex mask, if you're making a latex mask, you want at least an inch of clay all the way around, at least a half inch to an inch, 
all the way around the form. But with resin, it doesn't matter because you can be as thin or as thick on the clay as you want. It's up to you personally. You can do that. I'm already wanting to get into sculpting and form and details and shapes and stuff, but I'm not ready yet. And it's just so. Let me get a little fish here. A little quarter fish from bread in there. Now, different artists do it different ways. So if I'm not doing it the way you do it, you see me adding clay over clay and that type of thing and stuff like that. Like I said, I'm just doing minimal amount because the problem with this clay is the thicker it gets, the more it will dry out. It's just, it's just this is water-based clay and it dries out. Monster Maker's clay, the oil, uh, red oil-based clay does not dry out at all. That does not dry out too yet. I'm going to go down the back of this thing because it's going to be a resin model. Um, I don't know how big of a back I want, but it will be a, uh, just a, like down the back here. So I can take, you know, like I said, I've got the basic shape here. So I can use the clay and I can go right along that line. Put in clay, check out clay. That's the whole thing about clay that's fun to work with. You can put in and take out what you want. I'm gonna try to form this and just shape it and stuff like that. And this is like rough, you know. Doesn't have to be neat, doesn't have to be tidy, nothing like that. The thing is, I have OCD, and so my, my you know, I'm kind of like nervous and jumpy and shaking because my hands want to do something different with this. My mind is already trying to get into what I'm going to make. And my brain is kicking over and saying, oh, okay, you need to smooth that out. There's errors here. You need to fix these. You need to do that. So, but i got to get the clay down first. So I'm fighting with myself to get the clay down on the form before I do anything. And then my brain is like, well, while we're here, we might as well do this. We might as well do that. So it's a little bit difficult having OCD and doing this sometimes because like on one of my other sculpts that I did, the Vengeance sculpt, um, I was sitting there days on end in front of my computer with the photos and working on it. And I had it in here and working on it, working on it, working on it, working on it. I would do that for hours on end with it and um, couldn't get uh, couldn't get anything right you know sometimes and, and it took everything I had to not get angry and that's one of the things that's another thing um, sculptors get frustrated frustration sculpting uh, is easy to get it's like writing you get writer's block. Uh, you, I, I don't know what they call it for sculptors, sculptor's block or whatever. But you can easily get frustrated and it takes an incredible amount of courage and resistance to not just punch a hole in the thing. And I've done that many times where I've gotten frustrated and I've just, you know, I didn't have an head head 
and I was sculpting from raw clay, I would take clay and just lump it down and shape it and form it. And I didn't have this mannequin. That was the earlier ones that I did of Stallone and uh, Schwarzenegger. Um, I would just take clay and just lump it in and put it on like a mannequin. Now, I didn't have the head here, but I have like a little department store mannequin head. I still have it out there in the shop. And I would do that. My thing is, I want to very carefully, because what I like to do, so I know where my ear placement, the proper placement for the things are, I like to kind of put this down and lightly mold over the form so I know where my basic features are and I can mold on them. So, like I said, you know, I've got the, the face here. And I know that's going to be the generic ear shape right there. So. I'm going to try and just take all this and move it over. Smooth it out and move it over. And if this clay starts to dry out, you can always use water. And you can... Uh, Smooth, dip your fingers in water and smooth it on the clay and it puts moisture back on the clay. Where it doesn't have to dry out. And I'm already wanting to squish the form down and everything. I mean, I'm just kind of like going, okay, this is the way my mind works, where I want to make sure that all my details are in the exact same spots. And like I said, you utilize the clay, the, the form, the nose, the eyes, the mouth, the lips, and all that stuff, and just utilize those portions to create whatever it is you're going to make. So, you know, people will... Like go, okay, I'm going to just slap some clay on here and, and stuff like that. And see, that's why I said it takes a longer time to do it when you have the, uh, let's see, I will go around and I will leave the ear area exposed, right? Because that's no, I know the shape and everything I need to make the ear. Now, one of the tricks that I've learned because ears are very hard to do for some people. I uh, made silicone molds of my own ears. Okay. Now the thing about working in water-based clay is you cannot melt this down and pour it into a mold. This has to be um, done in a fashion of like I'm doing it right now. That's the only way you can do it with this clay. And with the, like I said, I made a silicone mold of my ears. So in doing that, I always have a set of ears to put on a form if I need it. And uh, in doing that, um, I see I've got my eye placement, and I want to make sure that I get my eye placement right. So I'm putting that right there, underneath the eyes, right here. Because what I'm going to do is I've got those eyes out there in the shop. And I'm going to put an eye right in there and then we're going to sculpt around it. So, like I said, I'm just taking the generic shape. This would be, a lot of these in latex would be the way they shop, uh, uh, sculpt hoods for a mask. So, you know, you can do a hood. Um... Let me find out where this ear is right here. Yep. And I've got the ear area here. Okay. I'm sticking clay off of here and putting it over somewhere else. Gonna spread that around, form that around there like this. Like I said, you can do it as thin and or as thick as you want. Okay.
kind of going to do this with a play here on the view to make sure that area is exposed so I can go and put the ear up. Uh, let's do that and just know where it is. So like I said, some people, in the beginning, I did the, uh, just taking a slab of clay and just slapped a bunch of clay on there and spent hours and hours and hours and hours shaping and molding it before I finally got to detailing it. And that's the thing where your detailing is going to be what brings out the prominent features of whatever you're sculpting. Like I said, you know, on something like this, I want to use as much of the forms natural texture as I can um, because that's what makes it easier to do a quicker sculpting in a matter of hours rather than days. It depends on your level of, 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 of um, experience and it also depends on your artistic ability to do what's called replication. Um, taxidermy and, and art and sculpting and painting. Replication means you simply take an image from whatever you're looking at, like the laptop, if I've got a photo up there, I try to take that and I try to duplicate the images or the features or the details as best as I can on it. I already know that's going to be the lip area, so I'm just covering that up right there. Press that in there and mold that on there. Like I said, you can do as thin or as thick. For a silicone mold, I don't need that thick a layer of clay. For latex, you need a thick layer of clay. Okay? And that's why, since it's going to be resin, that's why I'm doing this in thin layers. Because all I have to do is make silicone over the top. You can either do a matrix pour or you can do a brush on. I usually do brush ons because brush ons will um, brush ups will do capture a lot uh, 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 more features. The only drawback to that is uh, what you do with a matrix is you have your your under thing like this this bed head. You make your sculpting on it. And then you pour the silicone, you box it in a box mold, and then you pour the silicone on there. Um, and like I said, that's basically the matrix way of doing it. John Matrix, matter of fact. So now you've got the features, the predominant features, the nose, the mouth right here. So I always outline that so I know exactly where the lip placement is going to be. That's like I said, you know, you utilize what you've got. If you want to make impressions, you want to make details, you want to utilize whatever you've got. 
But the only thing is, you're putting details on top of the clay. Any details that are underneath the clay are not going to wiggle and worm their way up to the front. But, you can make impression molds like this and wiggle your way up, uh, not wiggle your way up, um, push your way through to where the details can come up somewhat and then you utilize those in making a form, shape, and impression. Alright, so now I'm going to pause this for a second because I need to go out in the shop and get some eyes. Okay, I've got these packet of eyes here. Um, I've got some out there in the shop that have uh, backings on them that I can impress in here. Let's see what colors I've got. Now these are half forms. Okay. I'm going to try brown. We're green, brown, blue, and I don't know what the other one is. But we're going to try brown. Okay. So, now. Put the eye in there like that. Okay. And you mold around it. And put some clay in there. Now the thing is with these uh, forms, you can do one of two things. I'm using this as an example. I'm not going to do this this way. But you can use eyes like that. Mold around them. And make a figure. But the only problem with this, doing it this way, the eyes themselves stick out. If you can see this, they stick out from the form. Um, so what you can do if you have a form or whatever, or sometimes what you can do with clay is when you're doing raw clay not on a form, you can utilize eyes like this in, in the placement where you want your character to be, your eyes. And you can put them in the form and sink them inside the head to where they look like they're there. And I'll show you an example of that. Let's put this in here. I'll mold around it. And the thing is, is, is you, you know, if you're doing raw clay and you're doing features and stuff like that, um, you can measure uh, for what you're doing. Now see, you've got the eye. You can do that, and you can you can you can put clay around it, and you can shape the eyebrows. You can shape the eyelids. You can do that. But like I said, the eyeball itself stick out. You notice how that is. But like I said, in raw clay, that is a technique that you can use that you can do with it. Now, what I like to do, because on the resin forms that I use, I just utilize where the eye itself is and I make it flat right that way see I know that's the eye because I make the orbital socket and put that impression in there and do that and you're just going to sculpt details on that I'll just take that one out just for a second. I'll just take that all off. Break that away. Put this clay back over here and use it. These eyes just sit over here.
Now, I'm not, it may look like I'm a little afraid to put too much clay on here, but the reason I'm doing this, like I said, is I want this to be kind of a quick sculpting. And so, I'm just using the basic symmetry of what I'm, I've got. Alright, now, you can do several things. You can get measuring tape, and you can measure the dimensions of what you want your head form to be. Um, in latex, when you're measuring the mask, you want it to be between like 24 and 26 inches to accommodate various size heads. Um, you can have um, features that are larger than the person's head in which the mask becomes too big to wear, but you got to remember latex shrinks. So latex has about a half inch shrinking uh, thing that it does. And, uh, okay, so you want to accommodate for that when you're doing that. Now, with resin, it's different. Because resin is not worn. Resin is just a shape and a form. It's a display bus. So this becomes not something you can wear, but you can put on a shelf. You can put on a table. You know, just kind of like a display thing. So I'm going to move this over here to my computer, my laptop. So you guys can see what I'm working with. sculpture and you can see me. I'm gonna put this clay on the floor right here beside me and I'm going to try to do my best to not capture my wife on this because she will get mad at me now see I've got my laptop in front of me let's bring up an image and see what we're gonna work with <clears throat> 